Yo, everybody, it's Heat Override. I'm ready to bring the pain for you. This week, I got a special guest, a guy I met actually just over a year ago. We got that Facebook timeline thing going. And guess what? We found out there was more alike to each other than we knew. Get ready for the brumble, because this is about to go down. Ooh, yeah. Yo, everybody, it's Heat Override. So let's get to it. Bring the pain. <laughs> What's up, brother? Everybody, this is Dan, Dugan Dan, the IPW champion, Icarus Hexon. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much for that brilliant introduction right there. That was, that was pretty spectacular. We try. We try to impress on Bring the Pain. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It impressed me. And, 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 and I mean, that's coming for a vote for Killer Cross right on your shirt. I mean, you got it. That, that uh, awesome. All day for Doomsday, baby. All day Woo! for Doomsday. Boom, all day. This is going to be fun. This is going to be so fun. So let's get it. Let's get right to it. IPW champ. You guys are running it. How, I, I've been watching it from the beginning, but explain from your point of view how it's all rent down. Well, it, 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 first things uh, first things first is um, IPW. Uh, it's it's still in the foundation and the starting point of building off the ground. Uh, IPW kind of started from uh, TikTok has this huge wrestling community when it comes to promo challenges and promo battles. Yep. So yep. that's how it started. It started with a promotion called KCW Kayfabe Championship Wrestling over on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And I love doing promos. I love doing wrestling based material. So I try to bring wrestling people together. Yeah. And shoot promos. But mm -hmm. now I want to bring it to a real live action professional wrestling promotion. Yeah. And that's where IPW is going to come in. That's awesome. And um, it's 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 starting it's starting to look promising, man. For a I, show coming up pretty soon. I saw I saw you guys got the building and everything. That's really awesome. Like the what got me right from the go was you know like first of all to be anything to do what we do like going going to a live event dressed as Macho Man, you got to have nuts. You got to be able to look people in the face, but then you don't really have to. Because like it's like he comes down from heaven and takes us over, and for those moments we just it's what we are, and you you look through the glasses or if you don't wear glasses whatever incantation at that moment we have, bringing that and making that bigger is truly something spectacular. I truly got to believe that. That's why I watch and I see what's going on. I see you doing the editing, and I've seen some other stuff. We'll get to him in a minute, but uh, I. You know, the editing, too. I mean, we were just talking about before we went live. Your video editing is awesome. And I'm like, Dang, I got to start doing some video editing because I've just been doing pictures because I do all this stuff for, of course, where I work and in things. But that has to be still nobody goes live. Like, I'm not going to be live in the bar. Just like, hey, what's going on? They're like, woo. you know, that doesn't happen. But you have that option. Tell us how you put it together. Really, with uh, with the whole with the whole video editing, uh, I've been honestly doing this ever since I was, before it was even popular, before it was even a thing. Like I, I've always been consumed with pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. As soon as I saw it when I was four years old, I was possessed by it. And I was like, if I can't be in it as a performer, I'm 37 now. Yeah. So that, I mean, yeah, you, you have those people that say Diamond Dallas Page started late. Well, I believe in that too. But yeah. There's yeah. ways that you can break into the business. Mm -hmm. And I always like putting together hype packages, um, almost like the old openers that you used to see on Monday Night Raw, yeah. even, even um, Sunday Night Heat. Yeah. That's, I, I that's love missing. those old promo styles. Oh, man. And I try to bring those packages back. Like I actually just made the March 5th um, promo package for OPW on point wrestling. Okay. In New Jersey. So mm -hmm. their show that's coming up, you will see my video on IWTV when their show starts. Oh, see, that's where it starts. 
And that's, exactly. that's, that's the inspirations we have because the thing is, is of course we have expansive minds. We just keep looking. We have, we're so creative and that is the, that's where the base starts and not like they'll say some, you're not everybody's cup of tea, but there's another half of that tea that you might be that cup. And when you put things together and it works, it just works. Like today, I noticed that one of our sister companies is more formal as like a pizza company. So like their posts make sense like that. Not these crazy ones that I leave about the Cuban sandwiches or all the other things that we make and, and set things on fire, or pulled pork. It's, it's, it's meant to that. But like what you said and what you brought up too, I just thought, I haven't thought about that in years. The beginning of like, Monday Night Raw, when you would be like, hey, this is, you know, Gene Okerlund. And then somebody comes running and goes, Gene, I'm ready to go. And he's like, what are you ready to go? And he's like, I'm ready. and that big fight sounds and goes, we're going to get back to you for Monday Night Raw. And then, do, 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 Yes. They don't do that. The biggest thing that got me hooked with making videos and anything, even highlight reels, was that the scene of Monday Night Raw where you saw Ahmed Johnson you saw Stone Cold Steve Austin in that old like slaughterhouse type building that they were standing in. Mm -hmm. And they had the hard rock pumping in the background. Uh -huh. Like, I'm going to make those. And I don't give a crap what I have to do to get there. Mm -hmm. I'll keep doing it until the day I die. I mean, yep. I, I, I get negative feedback. I get positive feedback. But that's, yeah, that that's happens. With everything. It, it's going to happen, yep. but I'm not going to stop doing it. Yeah. I, like, I, I had one guy. Stuff. On, on Twitter one time, we were having this argument and uh, I had just started my podcast and he goes, hey, bro, none of your buddies are going to come save you this time. I tagged them from this conversation. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to make everybody happy. I th thank you for your opinion. I will try harder and I will do other things. So like from the beginning of my podcast, of course, I was just doing it with my phone. And then I started getting all these like phone, like little microphones. So that picked up the the whole talking ensigns. Now I got this really cool, uh, it's called a podcast mixer. So it gives you all these little options that you can, you know, play with. You can have like, you could have people just cheering away. Look at this, look at this, <laughs> look at this fancy stuff you've got. Now see, if you come over to my podcast, you ain't going to get that professionalism. You're just, I can bring that. Guys, you're going to get these highly medicated guys that, you know, just half hanging on. He's got, you got like a whip in the side. And you whip them real quick and they go, oh, lights. Exactly. You know? I throw the cat at him or something. Yeah. Uh, Chrissy got that for me. It was for uh, Christmas. And like, she was so happy and to like get it. And it came with like this mic right here. And I already had two mics. Like I got a big gold mic and like it can go like hang up there and all that crazy stuff. And I have another one too. Uh, but this thing was really neat. It wasn't that bad. And it even gives you like the echo that you're at a second. It's like, and then, oh, this oh, is wonderful. This is, you know, what's even better. This. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. It's the macho man, Randy Savage. Dig it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah, like, I like it right now. Oh, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I got that button. I was like, I hit that. I was like, oh my God. It took like That's 10 years that. off my voice. <laughs> and especially, it's, it's charged. So I can take it with me. This is wonderful. This, this technology great. is wonderful. So. I'm going to take a picture and send it to you, man. It's really, it's, I love it, man. And technology, you bring that up. That's what's allowing us to create all this stuff and do all these things. So that being said, going forward, it feels great just to get your artwork out there. You brought up OPW, right? It was, and, and just for somebody to use that, like to get that compliment back at work, like, Hey, that, like when I made this uh, post a few weeks ago, I got 16,000 views. I was like, Whoa, that's cool. Like it, it's neat. It's, it's great when you get positive reinforcement because it was very mm -hmm. odd how the uh, whole OPW on point thing came up. Mm -hmm. um, I was just coming down from the flu actually. And I, I was really beat up. It really wore me out. I look at my phone and there's a message from the owner, Jeff Kane. And okay. he says, hey, that Alistair Black custom video you made was phenomenal. Can you make something for my upcoming show on March 5th? I said, this is the moment I've been waiting for. Yeah, let, let's do this. What do you yeah. need? 
when do you need it by? I'm, I'm here to help the industry in any way that I possibly can. That's awesome. It, it's, it's like, like right now, cause of course I'm doing the football thing and everything with Dr. Roto and baseball, when it comes up and stuff that sometimes that stuff, and then just working a real job takes your life. So like when you want to relax or do something for yourself too, as well, because I mean, don't get it wrong. DrRoto.com supports that. They changed my logo. They have it on my podcast. They put my sports podcast on their website. And that's what I have to do to make sure that it's everything is relevant and that I'm staying in contact with, you know, customers because there's a paywall and that's neat that it, but it took me 10 plus years of free writing under married with DFS that I used to do with Chrissy all the time. And then it was just became like, she's got her own sign business with her paparazzi. So now it kind of had to separate and that's where I kept going. And then he's always been a friend. I used to come on and do these 60 second promos when this, uh, he used to be teamed up with Tommy G on Sirius XM. So the minute I would come in and the first time Tommy actually met me, you could hear doc in the background. And I, the producers were telling me about this. They were like, just let him go. Just let him go. And it was just like, oh just go and it just explodes and then we talk sports and everybody's happy and then i got that nod last year after i hurt my knee like that was that whole journey too doesn't start i feel that if i don't hurt my knee because it was like three weeks later after having that right knee injury uh, february 4th he gave me that call and i was like dude i am so down and then i got that permanent layoff and it's like your path is chosen like TKO, TKO and then Dr. Roto as like with you, with your video editing and IPW have now become a part of our lives and we love doing it. Exactly. Exactly. Couldn't have said it better. Oh, but you can, you can say it better. <laughs> so going to, because I know that you used to have it. Icarus Haxon of the name. I was like, when you, you put that together, I was like, God damn. He's a fucking dude, man. He's just got some good names. So what went into that? And, of course, tell us about your wrestling style because I've seen it, but maybe not everybody that watches Bring the Pain or listens to Bring the Pain has seen it yet. Okay, so um, thank you so much for talking about the name because um, I wanted to do something that was very different than everybody else kind of throws out there. Mm-hmm. Um Originally, it started with just a character. It was just another persona that I wanted to have to get away from my normal routine life. Yeah. Because we all need something different. You do. The the last name Hexen comes from an old 1940 silent movie called Hexen. Wow. And it was it was actually the original Dante's Inferno. It was about the levels of hell, and he had to save himself. Um, I love old silent movies. I think they're some of the best creations ever made. And mm-hmm. it gives them a chance. Yeah. Um, the first name, Icarus, everybody knows, flying to the sun, that literally has nothing to do with Icarus in my eyes. I love the name Icarus. Yeah. And I went, Icarus, the sin eater hexen. It makes sense. Because it totally. Sin- a sin eater was actually a person back in the old days in the 1800s or even earlier. They would erase the sins from family members that pass away to get into heaven or get to the next world. Yeah. And they would pull the sins and they would hold them for the rest of their lives. That's so beautiful. I was like, that's my name. That's what I'm going with. It fits me. And my wrestling style I love the Lucha Libre arts. Mm-hmm. I, I don't consider myself, I don't want to be a high flyer. No. I love the transition games that Lucha mm-hmm. Doors play. And okay. I, I've always been a brawler myself. I mean, yeah. growing up, I was a boxer. I did Muay Thai for five years. I was, mm-hmm. wrestler, I was a wrestler in high school. Really? I never knew that. That's awesome. I love, I love to watch my opponent struggle. <laughs> that's, that's my thing. Yeah. I well, they, they struggle. 
they struggle the minute they step in the ring because their name sucks compared to yours. <laughs> That's just this right, right there. It just, I don't even care. You know, you bring up a thing of the art of the name back in the day. And this is what a lot, everybody can argue. They still say the greatest gimmick ever was the undertaker. Okay. It wasn't Paul white. Okay. No. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, you know, Terry Belay. It wasn't yeah. any, it wasn't Randy Poffo. The WWE creating names was the way it almost separated itself from WCW back in the day, because you would go over there and you'd have Rick Steiner and you'd have regular guys like Alex Wright, the wonder kid. Yeah. I, I'm a, I, I, to speak on that. I mean, I'm a huge old school guy. Mm -hmm. When I grew up, you had guys like big Von Vader, big yes. Van Vader. You had bruiser Brody. You had, yes strong names their identities matched mm -hmm. sometimes it wasn't even a character it was really just them turned up about five thousand percent yeah like the and only guy from the 80s i'll say hercules big guy chain okay he's unchained like he sold the hell out of it he did he sold the hell out he did of it. he was just and then everybody would yeah. clear and it just you know that's what it was and then the both products back then, of course, have changed over the years. We all know the wars and stuff, but that was what it is. So when you see a name like Icarus Haxon, or if you decided to go with maybe an, a derivative of your name, like, you know, whatever, you could be Dan the man or something like yeah. that. It, it's like, okay, he's the man. But then it's like, okay, now what do you do? You got to shave the beard and you'll start sliding, whiplash in the, the it gets too complicated. <laughs> I wish I could whiplash the mustache. I really do. They say I'm a lot of earwax is needed. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. And pomade. who grows that much earwax? Like who just, somebody just, just sitting there one day, just drooling it out of their ear. And they're just like, wait a minute. I can do that. A guy that's been a goddamn hermit his whole entire life is going to have that much ear. <laughs> I don't know. I can't say that's, that's what you get. <laughs> Left turn. Yep. <laughs> yep. good stuff so again going back into the name let's get to the style you said brawler style i seen it you almost sim you reminded me of of course mankind the mankind image how like you have like this coming at him this sound coming at him because like, ah. like i heard that unless you've changed it more from there but that's what i heard between like all the motions it's it, realistically i just um I kind of just meshed everything that sometimes the Icarus character changes. It all depends mm -hmm. on who the opponent is. It yeah. all depends on how they approach me. Mm -hmm. If they approach me on a more physical level and they try to get in my head, you'll see a painted face. You'll see a, a clown mask that looks like skin that's been ripped oh. off somebody's face. Uh -huh. there's different versions. Sometimes you'll just have this plain yeah. Jane mustache, beard, all that. And it'll <laughs> just be me. Yeah. But then I just flip that switch. It just depends on who the opponent is. It depends on the promo style. Uh -huh. um, it, it all, it really changes. Like look at edge. Look at yeah. how edge has evolved. Yeah. He, it, it all, it takes people that hated opponent. him. And I love, I've loved Edge forever, forever. Like most people, if you were an Edge fan from the go, then you didn't care what he did. But at the same time, it always fit his style. But to this day, Metalingus is one of the best entrances musics you could ever have. Like, yeah. And just coming out and just feeling that freaking energy, just ugh, like that's what it got is. A match. Everything's it's, got, it's a, got match. a match. You're right. You're that's that's exactly it. And that's why I said. The name is matching and you've got the gritty grunt style. You change it. But what I think is the best is no matter how many imitations we do, which we'll probably get to a lot more of those during this interview. And you have become your own character. And that is priceless. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. It, it took a while. It, it took 37 years to get there. <laughs> it really did. I'm almost 44. And I, I mean, this is the bring the pain, the high energy has been me like all my life. I just never really understood it, like tapped into it till it was like those calls 
on Sirius XM. And then they were just like, you gotta get 60 minutes. You gotta bring the pain. And I'm like, all right. And I'm like, let's go. And I would just, I, I got banned one week. I got banned because they were like, I tried to do this trade with my wife and she's like, no, I'm not going to do it. But then she needed somebody. She said, yo, she dropped ODB, you know, Odell Beckham. And, uh, and then I picked them up and they called fault. They called party foul on that. They let me call for a whole week. And it's just like, it's just a whole bunch of fun, but there's a guy, there's a guy I know. And there's a guy I have already, I have done a podcast with and his name is Dallas Dixon. Do you see your past ever crossing? I am, uh, I'm accepted to uh, any challenge. Really, I mean, I'm open to any competition. I mean, it could be physical. It could be, it could be straight promos. I mean, mm -hmm. I get so much fun off of just sometimes going back and forth in exchanges in a yeah. promo style. Uh -huh. And then, if the physical comes into it, then let, let's get physical. Well, I mean, I he's probably going to get physical. I don't turn down any chances. I don't. I don't turn down any chances. That's Dallas can get it. I mean, I'm not a Dallas fan anyways. The name <laughs> just irritates me. So yeah. <laughs> are you a, are you a Steelers fan then? I've been a Pittsburgh everything my whole entire life. Oh, that's cool. Man. I'm even a, I, I I'll be the first one to admit I love the Pirates. And what what do we really do? Oh uh, that's I, love I mean, every once in a while they end up in my write up. <laughs> every once in a while. <laughs> If they got a good, like when they had Josh, you know, Josh Bell was cracking. I was like, yeah, I'm going to write that guy up. You know, That's back the in the we get We get lucky sometimes. You do. I mean, McCutcheon was great. But it was like those last three years after they signed that big contract, it was just dull. And I was like, damn. Yeah. I was like, I didn't expect that at all. But, you know, let's get back to, to Dallas. I was, it was so, you know, the whole little circle with, Chrissy and she works at the, you know, the EIA. And so that's how I met Ian and everything. He came over for a WrestleMania and I, he was hinting, he was hinting at this. He was like, yeah, we'll do this thing. And he was like, I don't know. He's like, I can't say anything. And this is what it is. I actually did not know he joined until I went and did the research leading up to talking to you because then I was like, all right, I'm gonna make sure I know my places and things that I went and looked. I was like, is that Ian? I was like, I, she's like, yeah. And I was like, I love it. And his name came out. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, he's a baller now. He's gonna. That's that's gonna be the Sidney Whitlash of the of the crew. He's trying. He's trying. That's all, but he, he don't bark up my tree. Don't bark up my. Not tree. yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Hey, you're too intense, pro wrestling for that little boy. Bit, mm -hmm. Yeah, little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bringing the pain. <laughs> beat comes on, beat goes on. And the crap, <laughs> we can do this all day. That's what. So let's get let's let's get into that. Let's get into you know, growing up, we were talking, we weighed in. I started out as a Hogan guy, but I love George the Animal Steel, and of course Macho Man. Fifth grade graduation, they were playing a bunch of songs for us. Once they got the pop and circumstance, all the boys were like, yeah. Macho man. So what got you into it? Where where about were, were you? What champ? Because I I'm pretty sure Hogan was on his way out. That's when Randy was feuding with Rick, right? It, it was the time he was feuding with Rick. I'm uh, uh I, I I I'll be the first one to tell you. I have never been a Hogan fan. I um the guy in real life, he's a great guy, probably. I don't know Hogan yeah. personally, I mean, yeah, Hogan. so I can't yeah. say nothing. But his character, the one that they made him portray, I yeah. did not like Hogan. I was not a Hulkamaniac. <laughs> I was a Randy Savage freak from the minute I saw him. Yeah. And then I'm going to throw one at you that nobody ever says. Daniel Spivey, when he played Waylon Mercy, Waylon was probably Mercy. the guy that got me in to the art of wrestling dude and anything in that's a name i mean i vaguely remember Whalen, but like that that's like to me i know it you see i think it was my love for george the animal steel at the time that made me was like 
He's like, come on, Randy, just leave him alone. So I was like, ah, I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't suck myself in. And then when like Miss Elizabeth kept looking after George and I was like, this is so beautiful. That's what is it. But the minute that was gone, the minute the whole, the, the whole like Hulkamaniacs collide and Hogan and Warrior was finally done. That like, that actually, I'm happy that actually happened. A lot of people probably don't say that, but that needed to happen to open up to what happened in the future with, of course, with Randy, Rick, Brett, and finally the small guy, the athletic guy, of course, we've heard that too, get to the top of the pinnacle because back then, and it's still today, that's what the biggest knack on Vince is, is cookie cutter, cookie cutter, cookie cutter. Yeah. Randy Orton, Randy Orton, Randy Orton. It's like, but they can't always be great. That's, that's, he forces it down your throat. If he likes something, he's going to force it down your throat. Yeah. You've seen that over time. It, it's just his, that's his way of throwing a spice at you. Yeah. He's just going to hit you for a loop one of these days. Yeah. Yeah. Like the whole feed me more with Ryback. Like he had something so big and then he vinced it right at the end. He just like freaking shoved his ass cheek right in his mouth and was like, <laughs> feed me more. And it just like was like, wait a minute, what just happened? And then right from there, and then you hear that he was hurting wrestlers, and then <laughs> done. That's the thing of that'll do you real fast. Well, I mean, I'm surprised that Nia Jax got far when she did because she was known for hurting people all the time. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, Van Vader was hurting people. Vader had his eye popped out at one point. In his yes, that's. I so mean, sick. It, but he popped. It's, the thing about even like Vader, he was still so scary. I remember like one of the real other than like, you know, Rick and Steamboat, because, you know, that that I mean, Randy Steamboat, but like Rick and everything he did with Dusty, that was one of the things that got me back into WCW was Vader versus Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Yeah. Oh, man. He punished Duggan. He punished him. And it was like, dude, I still remember him up in the rafters. They took that one video in that rafters. just like, I'm coming for you. They're just like, Ugh. Yeah. Like, yeah. it didn't matter that he hurt people. That was an error that they did eventually, you know, hurt people. I'm not going to say like, okay, the thing that happened with Hogan in the ankle back in the day, that's dirty. But then what happened at this time, you know, like he just took that. He was just like, Dude, my brother's a big dude, and he would walk around like this, go, and I was just like, <laughs> yep. was just, he looked like him, and it was like, that's just so awesome, and it, and it was fun to see, but it drew me back to WCW, like, it drew me back, I was like, what do they got, and then I seen that promo, and I was like, this guy up there in the rafters, man, I love that guy. <laughs> Wrestling, like, Vince McMahon, yeah, did they go back on the Vince McMahon thing? I yeah. Mean, he's he's so unpredictable, and we might, we might, the fact that we might see him come back at 76 to take on Pat McAfee, oh. I mean, you're seeing reports about that all over. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've seen it on Fightful, and I was like, oh, it, it, Vince is something else. He, I mean, he's a, he's a freak of nature with his body really and is. stuff, but Go back on with that. You you got you're on to something, man. Like get back in the ring, bro. Yeah. Yeah. If if he gets in there at 76 against McAfee that mm -hmm. had that great match against Adam Cole, it, it speaks volumes about who real Vince is. I mean, people that are fans, we yeah. don't know him personally. We, we no. can only hear speculation and reports about what's happened in his mm -hmm. career. But the man is a genius when it comes to wrestling. Yes. The writing right now, yes, it might not be very good on, on WWE. Yeah. But they still know what they're doing. They're, yeah. They're, they're the supreme for a reason. I'm saying Elimination Chamber was not bad. Wasn't bad it at all. It was not. It was not. And people that are just disappointed are the ones that hate Brock. And if you're hating on Brock, you're not a real pro, pro wrestling fan. I can't, yeah, I'm like he's... Ever since he did, you know, the whole man bun and beard thing and he's kind of like more of a face now like that's what you needed you needed to turn because like roman is a is a great heel you know he he's is. rolling around coming out with lays on uh, like that's yeah. him and brock right now 
I had no, like, I was just waiting. I was like, I, I looked over because Molly was sitting there watching it with me. I was like, but Brock's just going to kick this, this window out. And it didn't happen. And it was funny too, because right before I was like, Brock's going to kick that man through the other window. And it happened to be his pod. I was like, Oh dude, like that. I was like, when theory was like, do I run? Do I hide? I was like, he shouldn't climb. He's too big to climb. And he started running. I was like, this is just not going to end well. And Brock is fine. But at the same time, you know, it was wrestled solidly. The whole pay-per-view, what WWE has been doing, hasn't been much of a storytelling. It's like their guys have been in funk, but the dang wrestlers, superstars, whatever you want to call them, have been putting that work into the ring. Yes. Yes. 1,000%. I mean, Brock coming back, Austin Theory, um, the fact that he took an F5 from the top of the chamber was 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 freaking awesome like from the top of the pond yeah I, and i'm i called that too because i okay. do picks on every one of the pay-per-views that come up um i do picks and i was like for an extra 15 bonus points i'm calling the theory to do something crazy and of course <laughs> he takes an f5 off the pod i'm like see i can call this i can call i was this. scared <laughs> i was scared i was it. like he did. He he got the legs underneath him and took it. But man, if he had hit the chain off his neck and flipped some way, dude, I'd have, that would have got like that would have just been insanely popped. That would have got up there. That would have. And it, mm-hmm. unfortunately, that's not supposed to happen. So it no, didn't happen. And we're we're good. But yeah, man, that match would have happened twenty five years ago. I guarantee that man would have been bounced off those chains, flying in the middle of the ring like a discus, and hit. And I'd have been like, we'd have been like, whoa, like it just the, the the wow factor is is still there. And I actually won't be much of a hater. I didn't mind like the movie skits at the end, you know, like at the end of the pay-per-views during the lockdown and everything like that. I was like, look, it's like a movie. This is great. I'm just going to watch I, the Bray Wyatt monster one. That is, that was dumb. I didn't like that one. The best was Undertaker and Styles. That was the best. Yeah, that that was the best. Um, I I liked them all because I'm a cinematic guy. Yeah. I loved them all. It it, it showed the versatility of how wrestling can go. They can throw you for a complete loop. The only one that sucked, in my opinion, was Karate Man and Ethan Page going at it in that impact. Oh, that that was probably the worst thing. I've that that was that was bad. Yeah, that was I bad. Feel bad for Ethan Page's mind during <laughs> that. I, I really do. I would have been having a headache. Ethan Page, you're a good guy, but that was a horrible <laughs> idea. That was horrible. Do not do that. It, and just like the whole thing, it 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 just that's why I think that 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 brings. That's why I brought up the Taker and and Styles. Like there was so much to it. It was like we were watching a short film. WWE got to create it, and it was fun. I was like, yeah, cool. This is neat. And it's like it reminds you of like, okay, so growing up, we all had to deal with the Haystack semi matches with Dustin Rhodes. Okay. Like we're watching guys throw down in a Haystack match in the back of a moving semi. Yep. This was way better. This is leagues. Like, you could have expected Steven Seagal to pop out at one of those little matches. Guess what? It didn't happen. In this, this was solid. It was good work. It was very good time. work. You could have had two superstars retire off of that, really. You could have had AJ and Taker really stepping away from wrestling after that. Yeah. It was spectacular. Yeah. They did yeah. what they were supposed to do. I mean, acting careers. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I mean. thousands. It, it just they, they they played the part everything was good about it and that was the period where people were like this is like eh. and it's like you know what accept what you can do because you still live through that you still take that in you still experience it and it was different it was new it was fresh people are hating it. i'm like dang i love this shit let's go mm-hmm. and that's why that's why we're talking about the video editing and bringing everything in so let's talk about wrestling music let's talk about wrestling music just offhand you don't have to give me a top five anything of musics what has been most of your like top musics that you ever gone to in wrestling like just one you put in a, you put the 
you know, WWE volume five or WWF volume one or something. You put it in and you just play music. Which one's, which one's always got you? Oh man, this is going to be easy. And I, I really hope Billy Gunn's listening to this. When I say this, ass man has got to be my go-to song. When I, when, when I hear it, uh, I mean, I will play that loud as hell when I'm driving down and I will make sure all my windows are down. <laughs> ass man <laughs> is the greatest theme song of all time. Ass man. <laughs> greatest thing. I love to touch him. I love to eat him. I love to pick him. Like, come on, man. It, it was, it was great. It was, Gosh. it was awesome. I, in that, in that whole, like, just bringing that up, like that whole DX era, those, those songs, we're all popping, man. Like people forget, like, you know, like the old Triple H song was like, it's a song. It's just like, yeah. Oh. yeah. He would just come on. Like, but people hate that guy. But I love, I've always been a Triple H guy. Like, I don't even know how Alex Wonder can beat him in WCW. He was amazing then. And that's why I think he was like, I lost this dude doing this. I still play. I, I okay. You you ask me. Yes, do it. Five. Let's go. I, I, number one's. I'm gonna start in reverse. Number one, ask me. Number two, D'Lo Brown. Yes. You're you messing with a real deal now. See that <laughs> that that was my shit right there too. Number <laughs> number three, all day nation of domination. Yes. Nation yep. of domination. Number Oof. four, of course, Macho Man. Yes. And the fifth one, the, it was never released except for when, I mean, because Sid slips up and he throws an F-bomb in it, but S Snap, oh, Psycho Sid. Yes. That I have was, that CD. Snap was probably one of the best theme songs, but he had to slip up and say the F-word in there. So. Oh, dude, when you did that, when you did that little video thing with Sid, people forget it, like how, like, that's a song that is actually like a movie. And the thing yeah. is, is that some of these people like take or get long entrances. Sid had a long entrance. So you listened to that song. You listened to how he felt and you yeah. believed it. And it was more than believe it. Cause just looking at Sid as a person, he was that look. That's what we were talking about. Like he did. He wasn't just Sid Jaffe. He was psycho Sid. And, and he would just come out all oiled up, you know, yeah. like, yeah. And, I'm the master of the universe. Yeah. I'm the ruler of the world. Yeah. But <sighs> it, it, five is pretty much tied because I love Minoru Suzuki's theme song. I, I love his theme song. Okay. Um, it's that, it's that hook that brings yeah. you in. You're mm -hmm. like, oh man, I'm, I'm a mighty warrior tonight. I'm a <laughs> mighty warrior I will listen. I, I might listen to the game, but everybody loves that song. And I yeah. don't try to put it in there. I've I'll never been a name, a main guy. I'll go to a dinner date with my wife or something. So, yeah, like, like a lot of people, and, and I don't know why they give them all that, that I've always loved, you know, he, you go, like, here comes the axe. Here comes the smasher. Like, dude, once you heard freaking that shit hit people forget like i don't even care that they were fake lod mm -hmm. that music just hit hard that was always one of my favorites as well i hell i love coco beware's music man He's oh, coming boy. <laughs> the whole Coco music. yeah like i i i i love that that was one of my i'm mean, that's not top five for me uh top five Technically, would the Austin's got to be up there, even though there's no words, and it's I I probably would put Triple H near at five in extension, but the rest of it's gonna be it's gonna be Metalingus Edge, it's gonna be Randy Orton, and it's not even as Curtis. It'd be it was his old one. It went oh man, take what's mine. Oh yeah, hey, that was probably what his do you best one. say? Oh man, burning oh. That, like, I love his new one. I'm literally all about the Randy Orton. The RKO, I love the whole thing. It just comes out. The beard, I just, like, I love the shit. Like, I look like him almost. But 
at this no I, he looks way better than me you know just move that polish nose yeah but <laughs> dude man those were songs that's always been like one of my things i even got the rap i got the rap album like i just do all these i got all those from back in the day i mean pile driver i got that album pile driver is yeah. cool it's old school it's and things have. like that it's must have uh, it's 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 what we it's the only thing we had we didn't have the internet if we wanted to play hogan's song and that's what sucked about that first pile driver album is that you were like let's get some of their songs and you're like nope here's coco's so i'm sitting there with coco beware's song but when you hear records automatically your head goes to like wwf old school albums oh yeah i was the ecw guy listen to harry and the slashers that's what oh. I was listening to. Snap your fingers, snap your neck. The yeah. original RVD, which oh. was Walk by Pantera. Yes. You had Sabu, the Hookah Blues. I mean, ECW the, had some legendary. Dude, the first guys. time I ever had exposure to ECW, they had a freaking promo. And I was just like, you know, it was late night. I was like, yeah, yeah. just doing this, right? And it's playing White Zombie. Yep. And I'm on huge rob zombie fan like and i'm like i'm just like whoa whoa so like i i, I called up my buddy in the middle of the night i was like duh, duh, duh. but he didn't answer i had to call him up the next day and we're just like dude i was like you gotta check this ecw stuff out it's crazy and and, and uh oh man who was there sean shane douglas shane yeah, douglas at franchise. the time was yeah he was uh i think he was the champ at the time I came in, RVD was part of it. Of course, Bubba and Bully Ray, they were part of it then. I, if I'm, I, so we didn't have computers much back then. I couldn't, my family couldn't afford a computer, so I can't. <laughs> that knowledge hasn't either. been been snowed. Yeah, I didn't have that either. I, I didn't have a computer either. I had to tape, tape trading was how I got my stuff. Yeah. And then you made tapes. You would just throw in wrestling songs and things. And that's, that's where I think it really comes from. Like, we always would thought like, like one time me and my buddy were talking, I was like, dude, the best way to come into work would be like the warrior song. Just come running in and grab some ketchup and mustard things at McDonald's and be like, <laughs> and just be like, ah, oh, everybody's getting ketchup and mustard today. Mac sauce. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's just like crazy. It just gets crazy, man. And it's like, it puts you in a good mood. And I think that for the people like us that can relate to that, that's the best part of life. It just makes you feel alive. It makes you thrive more. It makes you make Icarus Hexen as your name. Yep. That's but exactly it. I want that name to be catchy. I want everything to be catchy. You got it is. It's not like Fud Plud. It is Icarus Hex. Mm -hmm. it, it flows. Like, it's just cool. You, you, I mean, like, in, like, 10 years when you're popular and everything's, like, great, and you go kill a cross on us. I mean, you definitely have to change your name to that. <laughs> Just legally. I can only hope. I, Give I'm everything away. It. I'm thinking your about it. Driver's license. Like, Let me see your driver's license. Just hand it over and be like, like oh. My name know? is too cool for your ticket, sir. I, I can't take your ticket. <laughs> I can't take it. Oh, yeah. they be like, I'm not letting you off. You sign it. I'm like, just be like, oh yeah. <laughs> just at the bottom and just do it. So that's what going through loving wrestling, loving metal and everything like that. I want to bring up like your artwork, everything you do considers a dark element to it. And a dark element has to be a certain mind. Like when I was growing up, of course, I've already showed Death Dealer. When I was growing up, I wasn't allowed to buy this comic um not this certain one but it's hellblazer hellblazer i mean look at that front you got a monkey drinking a beer smoking a cigarette on top of a dude like yeah this is what we grow up with and at the same time then i got this i don't know if people consider that nudity but no that's this is that's, that's one of the more non-risque covers that he ever made and i mean you get this is what i was growing up to and then you get something like this you know, like mm. why I even bought this was because at this time, and this is a number one, they're all number ones, you know, it 
was Hellblazer. I remember the guy. He was sixteen. I was sixteen years old, and my buddy went there. And we bought both the Hellblazer comic that he gave to me, and he goes, he goes, hey. I know that your buddies are all over 18. He was like, so I know how this game goes. He goes, so what's going to happen is, is I'll just sell. Don't tell your parents and we'll be good. So he gave me a subscription and this is, uh, I will not say, I guess I shouldn't say, it. but <laughs> at the same time, that's how I had that element. And the first comic, the one thing about Hellblazer people need to know is it's British. So there's different terms. And that was, that was the lightning. <laughs> At the same time, the first episode I read was part of a story where he gets this guy possessed. He throws the guy at the, at the possessed person and he bites him in the nuts. And, and instead of blood, it was white. And I'm like. The beautifulness at, of a comic book. And at the end, he went out to his buddy Chaz because we all know Hellblazer. We all know you know, Constantine and things like that. And he was like, Hey, he was like, got a fag. And I was like, Hey, so I didn't know. So I went to my buddy and I was like, what's he mean by this? Is he being, and he goes, no, he's like, that's what a cigarette's called in Britain. I'm like, Oh, yeah. From there, it just went, it led to those other comics and everything. Like, like this one right here is straight graphic. So the only color in it is the blood. Yeah. that's that's cool stuff so talking about that where did it start for you oh man um now you're going into the dark parts um i <laughs> i want to i want to say the first thing that really ever got me into the, the the darker side of life is probably tales from the crypt i was addicted to okay tales from the crypt um and then I met Danzig. Um, I found Mother. I yeah. listened to that song on repeat, then Twisted Cane. Oh. Danzig and the Misfits. I mean, I have the Misfits tattoo. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I bleed for them mm -hmm. because they changed my whole perspective on things. And All right. then the comic book scene was more stuff like... Um, the original Terminator graphic novel that came oh. out way before the even movie did. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most graphic books I ever read. Um, my mom actually didn't care about the stuff that I got into. Yeah. She said, go ahead, read it, do, do whatever you want. And she mm -hmm. made me go, that's your fantasy world. Keep it there. And that's yeah. where I did. But I've, also, I've always identified with that type of life more. Than yes, sunshine I agree with that. And rainbows. Yeah, I'm like, and that I think that goes back real quick to throw it out there. It's it's why we don't like the cliche songs. It's like why we dig. It's why we don't go. I mean, even though we love Metallica and we we'll listen to Metallica, unless you hate them, uh, why you went misfits? It's why like everybody at the time when White Zombie was coming out, they were like Guns and Roses, man, and they were like, yeah, yeah. man, Molly Crew, and I loved Molly Crew. They're one of my best. One of my most favorite songs from Motley Crue is Shout at the Devil. Like, literally, it's on one of, it's on, like, my first podcast that I ever did. And it's because I just remember that the way he just riffed Vince through those verses. And at the same time, that just beginning, dun, 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 we all get it. And you would think, you know, you could go, you know, love love kills or anything like that. You can do anything from those kickstart my heart, kickstart my heart. If I'm driving a car, I'm going to drive it really fast. Okay. I know that, but that's not like what really broke me into them. That's what broke me in. So like, that's one thing I can relate to, to you at, with as well, because we can't just take that fancy rainbow stuff. We need to get down and dirty. We need to hear some other stuff. We need some grunge a little bit. We need to hear that. I was I was always that underground kind of kid. I I was listening to the black metal. I was listening to black metal oh, yeah. when I was seven years old. Celtic mm -hmm. Frost, um, Demu Bugare. They they started late in my progression. Mm -hmm. uh, Cannibal Corpse is the thing that changed oh. everything for me. I was like, who is this band? 
and where can I find their albums? Yeah. And then when I was a kid in the 90s growing up, you couldn't buy the Cannibal Corpse shirts. They were way too graphic. Yep. I showed my mom one. She damn near fainted on the kitchen floor. She said, what, what is this fucking shit? Like, what, what is this that you're showing? Me? Yes. Said, That's what I was just listening to upstairs. And I'm addicted to it. Yes. <laughs> this is what I want. This is the spoil me, mom. I'm only yeah. like 10, but I want this. It was, it was part of that. Like my mom and dad were pretty cool. They were hippies. So they pretty much let a lot of stuff go. And, and that's why even when dude told me is that, but like, you know, this is the days people are, are not realizing this is the days when we would be in the back of a Hellblazer comic and they would be like, Hey, there's a Hellblazer statue sent $295 yeah. on a check. And right. And that statue sitting right over there right now. And I've had it since then. And it's numbered. And the yeah. fact it, it's yeah. And one of those statues don't exist because my buddy, John, who's always been a judge dread kind of dude, which that's even kind of cool. It's in itself. I got him into Hellblazer and he bought that statue and it burned up in a big uh, complex fire along with Ooh. one of, one of my Hellblazer number ones that I gave him for his birthday, but you know, it just, that's a hurt piece. It is. It is. I still have two other number ones. So, so I oh, that, that'd be <laughs> compensated for it. You're good. Hey, I, I, I've went over a little bit, but yeah, so that's, that's what we were like, you know, like you said, the whole going to your mom, can I buy this? Am I allowed to buy this poster? My wife tells me stories all the time, how her parents were the rainbows in the suns. Like she listened to, she watched Poltergeist over at one of uh, her friend Andrea's house. And she was never allowed to spend the night over there again because she had nightmares the next night. Like I was just like, for me, like what caught me with Rob zombie and white zombie was it was the creativity. Right from the go, my buddy, we had a 3DO and I read it, read it a 3DO. I own it now. Well, I have because it's really old. <laughs> and uh, it was Way of the Warrior. It was a Mortal Kombat kind of game and it had the whole entire white zombie. Now we've heard like incantations of music over the years and it would stop. This CD, this game, it controlled horribly. It was like Marvel vs. Capcom meets Mortal Kombat in 1993. And it was like the dudes would go whoop and they would hang up there and they go whoop. So trying to time a kick was just weird. Yeah. But it was constant play of white zombie. So the game was hard. There was bloody fatalities and all that cool stuff. But you would get to these points where you couldn't beat the person. You would literally be stuck on a white zombie song for at least five rotations. Oh, yeah. And eventually, it started clicking to me. All the... <laughs> Do you find people, do you open graves to find people to fall in love with? And all those things play, and there was no filter to it. Planet motherfucker was planet motherfucker. Yeah. I mean, the, the people don't know how good the 90s are. And people like judge 90s people that grew yeah. up. Like, you guys need to just shut up. Do you understand there was a game called Maximum Carnage and it had green jelly? It had, porno for pie mm -hmm. rose that was one of the greatest video game soundtracks of all time at that one point i swear there was a cannibal corpse on there on the end credits if you ever beat the game which i never beat it and i'm still pissed off about it <laughs> and i'm gonna beat it one of these times when i'm like 65 yes finally done doing what the hell i want to do and i'm sitting I, I agree with that. I have it sitting up. It's upstairs actually in a drawer. I have the computer PC version of it from back then. I don't even know if the computer will play it, but guess what? I got computers upstairs that will play it. And oh, we'll make it just, happen. We're going to play it. Yeah. Play it. It's, like, it's just like, oh, crap. But yes, that was that's what drove. I mean, it was a great marketing campaign. Probably one of the greatest marketing campaigns ever, although they didn't get a lot of play. But at the same time, it was great at that time to be like, yo, just put the whole thing in. They were like, well, what happens when the round's over? Just keep that shit playing. Just keep that shit playing. There's no stop, man. If they go, dun, 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 and they beat you up in the dun, 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 did they beat you up? It went dun, 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 And it just I mean, we grew up in the age of Goldeneye that had the greatest pause menu music of all time. Yeah, somebody just brought that up on one of my video game things. They they were, did you see that meme yet? Where it was like the the... The golden eye people. No, I didn't see that one. Dude, there's a meme and it said the golden eye people 
when they made the pause music, there's a bunch of people in a studio going like this. I would be proud of it. I'd be headbanging too. I'm like, this is one of the greatest damn themes yes. ever in a pause. <laughs> I had to remember it. I was like, doo, 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 I broke doo, up with many doo, girlfriends because of that game. Because they're like, why don't you ever play the game? I'm like, because the boss menu is just what I want. It's just at. good. I, I, I had to play it. My I had yeah. to defend my reputation at that game quite often. And most of the time I was I was teamed up on my buddy Dave Steele. Uh, he was usually good, but he was never the best. You know, because he was playing music back then with you know, abnegation, which abnegation is getting back together. I still have their first album upstairs and it had to be completely blacked out because it was a picture of one of the first kids mauled by a pit bull. Oh. It's, it's literally, it's dis, it's disgusting, man. It's yeah. really disgusting. But back then that's what that nineties, early nineties slash grunge metal darkness, everything that that's was taken was. over then. That's what it was. That's and they're actually there's they have a show. I don't know if it's been, but it I think it's in May. It's in New Kensington. It's the first time they played together since like mid 90. So it's it's you know part of that lifestyle, part of that thing, part of that music. And the album's great. It's all cover, it's all you know, more like death metal. So it's it's a bunch of steel going, no, you know, okay. Love it. Speaking of that, death man. metal, we talked about this guar. That oh, was yeah. me, me. That was me and my buddy's first experience into death metal. Was my buddy John P. He goes, "Yo, man, look at this guar." So then me and my buddy Dave, we was like, "Yo, let's do something funny." And never we did. And he was like, "Let's go ask John for his guar tape." And he was like, "We went there, and he was so ecstatic that, but he wouldn't give it to us. He was like, oh, man, kid, why do you really want this?'" I was like, dude, we want to listen to it. So we grabbed, we finally gave, he gave in right up to Dave's house. We popped that shit in and we were outside of his house. And it was like, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, whoa, this is intense, bro. And this is like Bobby Brown days for me. So it's a little different. Yeah, Guar was a, it's a unique taste. It's a unique taste, but I loved every minute of it. I mean, Odorous Arungus, God rest his soul. He's up, yeah. in, he's up in scum, scum planet right now, probably living it up, so. <laughs> funny thing about that is well, not the funny but how awesome they are is when they played that concert with him dead up on that stage that's some hardcore shit mm-hmm. like that that is crazy and and a lot of people guar fest guar fest that's another thing that needs to like be like come back and be heavy again because sirius xm used to always do guar fest on their things they would literally send people there the whole weekend and they would just be playing the music and that's something that maybe Sirius fell off from. But at the same time, it was something that was like part of the package that was like, holy crap, I would never really like, I, I love all these bands, but I would never just leave it on because I'm just going to leave it on. And I just left it on. I just listened to all of them talk about it. And, you know, all the whoever there's like Jose Mangan is their main guy now. Yeah. But yeah. Back, back then, I mean, I was listening to all those guys just talking about it. That's what that's what. Is coming back all that so go off of that i i like that the old stuff is coming back um i, I feel like the, the the old school is the realist school it was we were we had backbones yeah we actually gave a shit about mm-hmm. things and we were accepting of more things yeah uh, everything right now is uh, i'll just say it, everything right now is too pussy yeah, it's too, yeah. Everybody's too sensitive, and yep. when you challenge something, nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to accept it. Nobody That's has. Right. Nobody wants positive feedback, but they want to feel good. Mm-hmm. It's kind of then that's where I'm a realist. So if you're a fan of me, you're you're gonna get real shit. Mm-hmm. That's what, it's gonna happen. Yeah, and I love the old stuff. And that you you talked about being real and and that's and just having a backbone. Like I think that sometimes that's why a lot of people say they have hobbies now, but they don't really have hobbies because we did have hobbies. That's what like you said when you brought up that your mom said you kept this world here, and then you took this world here. Mm-hmm. It's like going to work and being a great worker, 
and then having to come to work the next day and answer some questions about a podcast that you leave. Yeah. They can't, they, and the fact that that has happened, that's, that's, it's completely irrelevant at this point, but my last job did not like that fact to me. They didn't like that. I gave out betting advice or DFS advice because they think that that's feeding into people's addictions at the same time. They didn't accept me for loving sports and loving wrestling and loving the things that were me. All they wanted from me was to poke me and keep using me to do their agenda. Cause that's what it is. I understand that it's their agenda, but at the same time, that's what it's about. Like you have to, if you have this great employee, you shouldn't be like, I don't like who he is as a person. You should try to understand that if you don't, then ignore it, but people can't. And that leads to what you're saying is that they just don't have that. A lot of those albums, a lot of the things that were done in that era, we're talking about early nineties, mid nineties would not even be socially accepted. Right. Yeah. It, 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 nothing that we did back then would be accepted no. right now. No, even with those big I, video camcorders. Yeah, there's nothing that we did back then would be acceptable nowadays. No, um, I remember. Even though, even though they want to copycat us. Mm -hmm. Our styles, they've they taken our styles. They, they try. Everybody tries, but it doesn't work. Like 90s kids, I'll try to steal some 70s shit. Yeah. To be completely honest. Mm -hmm. If I could try to go old school gangster stuff from the 50s. That's mm -hmm. when stuff was real. I, I'm not going to try to look up Machine Gun Kelly and try to copy what he's doing or oh, anybody no. else. No. That's not my style. I want to go back in time Yeah, and remember the good things when we cared about yeah. perfection. Like, like when I went to that second zombie concert at the Warner and he came out to my chair and I, was, I just happened to be recording it, of course. And he came out to my chair and he like held his hand out to me. And I was like, oh. I totally fanned. I fanned moments out. Like I was a little girl. I, I was just like, Oh my God. It's my yep. and, and he was like, hold, he was like, hold it. And I got to see his jeans. I got to see, I got to touch his jeans. I Are was they like, real? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's the real, the real jeans. They look that good. And they're, I, I didn't like feel them up. <laughs> Yeah, you can see that right now. Our blubber product. mouth feels up Rob Zombie at Erie's Warner. <laughs> I, I touched his hand. I didn't wash my hands in two days. So I'm not even going to lie. I was, I was totally, it was just nice. And then, like, you hear me, I'm all like, whoa, Rob Zombie, come here. And he comes up. And then I just totally stop talking. And this guy behind me, after he leaves, this guy goes to me, he goes, that's the greatest video I've ever seen taken. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. That, that was like, it was fun, but it, it was it was that power. It was something that I've always wanted. Because when he came with Godsmack, I didn't give a shit. I love Godsmack, whatever. Maybe I don't. I like him. I'll list the Godsmack. They were a time and place. Skateboarding games. Dave, Mira, you know, I remember hitting it down. And that was cool. But the thing that really stood out is the minute Rob Zombie left the Erie Insurance Arena, half the crowd left with him. Yeah. And they didn't care about, you know, God smacking, putting on their little documentary thing. It was just about zombie finally in Erie. And that culminates everything that we've been talking about, which is the comics, the beginning, the, the start, where we talked about why we would, why you liked Macho Man at first and why I was sucked in with, I am a real American. And, oh. and, <laughs> and why we you know the cookie cutter name still exists and then going back to ipw and how everything has evolved how we've both learned through all these things and to be able to use them and to put them to your ideas right now that you're doing with videos is amazing and it all started and it was never contained by anyone its entire life that, that's exactly it. I, I, I didn't want I, I didn't want anybody to stop me. I, you can't let anybody stop you. No. And everything that I do, I, I and I put out. I'm like somebody's not going to like. Me. I'm not shooting for the moon. I, I'm yeah. really not. I'm mm -hmm. doing it solely for me. If you want to enjoy it, you want to follow my content. That's on you, and that's your God given right. Whatever God you believe in, 
That's what you're allowed to choose. Exactly. I'm giving you the platform to watch something that I'm creating. If you want to take that opportunity, that that's on you. And I welcome people to check it out because that's, that's right. what I make it for in the end. Is to that, share. It's beautiful, man. That's And that's what I think and what we've been talking about, what a lot of people lack nowadays is it's almost soul you hear it all the time you lack soul music is life blah 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 but is it really life because when you go to work why do you tune out music when you go to do all these things what do you have to do like when i used to come down to you know the hospital and we would make those passes that was just that was just some of the funnest times i think it didn't matter who existed what happened was that entire place became a blur and then it was just us and that, and that I, it goes back to that first night we met each other at PWR and I, I was talking to uh, JJ Rumham and I was like, yo, and he was like, I think somebody else is going just as macho man. And I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. What macho man. And I was like, Oh, I gotta go now. I gotta go just as macho man. This is going to be great. And right. And then I ran into you and not only was that night, we're, we'll talk a little bit about that. That night wasn't only awesome. To find out we have the same fucking birthday is even fucking cooler. It, it, fate has a weird way of just happening. I mean, it just, they throw people in your lives for a reason. I agree with that. That was great. That was, that's one of those, you know, those nights, like I haven't been, I've been working my dang tail off. So I haven't had any times to like, really just be like, I'm going to go to PWR and stuff like that. But I definitely want to go to one of them and, you know, I, I heard about McChesney's big return and everything like that, but I want to go to one of your shows. I want to be in your crowd. I want to be screaming, the car is Haxon all night long. I'm like, that. I don't care if it's against Dallas Dixon or the Dixon Line Century or the Oregon Trail. At the end, they all got to pay the piper. Everybody. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Everybody, it, it, it's going to happen. And when it does, I can't wait to share it with everybody. I mean, we're shooting for sometime in April. I mean, we're shooting for sometime in April. If it gets pushed back, if something happens, it's just the nature of the beast. Yes. Um, right now, if you go on the Facebook page and you check us out, we're, we, 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 we give as much updates as we can. That's right. Yeah, and so plug plug that too because people need to know where to go on Facebook. Are you on Twitter as well too? Do you- the Twitter account will be up on um, it will be up in about two more days. Uh, everybody's working diligently in the IPW family. Mm-hmm. Um, prayers go out to Shannon Goho. He's uh, the actual president wow. of the company. He's actually um, the one that's running the show. I was in a movie and with him. He, he's in surgery right now for his foot. Yeah, I've and seen that's that. kind of pushing things back. But if you go on Facebook and you go up to the search bar, yeah. you type in "intense pro wrestling," you'll see our barbed wire logo. Click on it, hit the notifications button, hit the subscribe, be a friend to us, be active on the page. Yes, we want activity, and we try to answer, we try to update people with as, as much information as we can. Yeah. We ask questions about what people want to see, what mm-hmm. wrestlers they want to see come here. We want to be fan based. Yeah, so. that's 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 awesome. And you brought that up, you know, with the IPW and going there and just getting out, just enjoying it. Because I think that's what was really cool about going back to that time last year was it wasn't just about me being there as even Macho Man and meeting you, which has been like just totally awesome. But at the same time, it was about experiencing that with my daughter. She had only experienced real wrestling events at, you know, the Erie Insurance Arena with WWE and all that crazy stuff. She never went to something local. And when Coney Dieter spit that beer all over her, she was like, is this supposed to happen? I was like, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, it was truly one of those moments. Who, I mean, I would never let anybody else or any other moment in my life ever spit beer on my daughter. But at that point, what being in that moment brought out in her 
wasn't even about that. What it was about, it was like just a raging crowd and people need to understand that's what you're going to get when you go to any local wrestling show, especially the ones like that are coming up, IPW, I'm seeing the roster growing. I'm seeing, I know you know people, you can bring somebody in as a big main event. And that right there, not only screams support local, support you locally and everybody else's artists, your characters that you have created, your artwork and support and enjoy. Go try it. Because if you don't, then it just shows that you just loving them suns and rainbows. You ain't trying to get down here into your nitty gritty. Absolutely. Awesome stuff, man. Is there anything else you want to bring up? Do you have to support? Um, do you have like, where can people find you? What can, where can they see your work at? We know we got on point wrestling coming up. We have your promo for that. So let's bring that up as well too, where that people can find that, watch that and then go. You can, uh, March 5th, um, you'll be able to find on point pro wrestling. We'll be presenting, uh, reflections of pain, um, live in New Jersey on IWTV. Um, there is going to be a seven, seven thirty, eight o'clock. The show will be starting. Um, then you can find me on every social media platform at Icarus Hexy. Any social media platform. Makes sense. Easy. You can find me at any one of those. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Awesome. Well, let me tell you, it has been an honor to finally get back to seeing what has brought us together and finally getting this together because we, we lead crazy lives. That's what happens. Exactly. But to get this done and to get this volume done, this is just awesome. So thank you so much for coming on Bring the Pain. Thank you so much. And this is definitely not the first time. We're going to make more of this. Absolutely, brother. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And as everybody knows, always remember to bring the pain. Ooh, yeah. We didn't do enough of those intros. <laughs> <laughs>